identify the incorrect statement regarding the figure shown below so in the figure if you see uh, the co2 is entering inside the rbc this looks like an rbc here okay because there is a central concavity okay now this co2 along with water is in the presence of carbonic anhydrase is forming h2co3 which is further dissociating into h plus and bicarbonate ion here you'll see a pump is there in which chloride is coming inside the cell and this hco3 is expelling out of these cells right so this chloride is basically coming inside the cells and this h plus is forming hhb uh, by reacting with the or combining with the hemoglobin so this whole uh, phenomena is basically known as the chloride shift or we also call it as hamburger phenomena okay so uh, let's try to understand uh, the transport of co2 actually so when we talk about the co2 transport that occurs by three ways one is going to be in the form of sco3 negative that is bicarbonate ion and 70 percent of your co2 is transported as sco3 then as carbonic compounds uh, almost 20 to 25 percent of your CO2 is transported as the carbonic compound and then you will be seeing it inside the plasma. So free dissolved plasma. Okay, that will be around 5 to 7 percent. So this is how the CO2 is transported. We are more interested in transport of SCO3 because it is 70 percent here and we'll be discussing the phenomena which has been asked in the question along with the transport of SCO3 negative. Okay, so if we just talk about the uh, transport I have just made an illustration here this is basically your tissue side this is going to be your CO2 that is coming out of the tissue this is going to be blood vessel okay this is the blood vessel through which RBCs are flowing okay and that is going to be your RBC okay so this here you will be having tissue and that this blood vessel is supplying these tissues of course in this there will be RBCs and CO2 will be coming out of the tissues here so on the tissue side there will be more more and more CO2 right PCO2 will be very high so this CO2 will be coming from the tissue and this CO2 is generated as a respiration right after the respiration of these cells so this is the tissue side if we see here I have made the lung here so here uh, this looks like the lung here and this RBC once it exchanges CO2 with this particular tissue site it will be reaching to the lungs as well okay so this is the tissue site this is the lung site now here if we see here the on the tissue site the CO2 enters the RBC okay and you, once it enters the RBC it combines with the water and forms the car, uh, H2CO3 basically okay so in the presence of carbonic and hydrates it forms H2CO3 which further dissociates into H plus and HCO3 negative. Now this H plus generally combines with the hemoglobin that is present inside the RBC and it will be forming HBH and there will be this HCO3 negative that will be expelled out of the cell in exchange with a chloride ion so one chloride ion will be getting inside this particular cell and SCO3 will be coming out of the cell now this due to this particular chloride uh, which is seen here this particular uh, cell will swell up okay so the swelling of cell or swelling of RBC will be seen here now we have seen that a chloride has been shifted and that's what we call as chloride shift and another name is going to be chloride shift and another name is going to be hamburger phenomena i hope it's clear now this cell will be reaching to the lungs also and here in the lungs what changes will be occurring here i'll be just telling you those changes so once the blood enters the lung all the reactions are reversed and oxygen combines with 
hemoglobin so oxygen generally enters in the rbc and that combines with the hemoglobin and this h plus is displaced because there was hbh that was formed so out of this hb is going to combine with oxygen and h plus is displaced even the chloride ion will be leaving this chloride ion here will be leaving the cell in lieu of the hco3 uh, negative right so it will be leaving and hco3 will be entering into the rbc and there will be a special protein that is the membrane protein that is known as band 3 so that leads to the exchange of cl and hco3 so here there will be a band 3 protein that will be leading to the exchange of cl and hco3 right so basically if we try to understand this whole phenomenon is known as the chloride shift when it goes to the lungs all the reactions are going to be reversed and you will be having the reverse reaction that means cl will be leaving the cell and sco3 will be entering the cells at lung side but in the tissue there will be entering of the cell and uh, cl and there will be uh, exiting of the sco3 negative so i hope it is clear now uh, we have just mentioned about the band 3 so if i just talk about band 3 little so basically the band 3 is also known as ae1 or we call it anion exchange 1 so it is going to exchange the anion so which are the anion cl negative is an anion and seo3 negative is an anion and it is basically a transport protein it is a transport protein and there why it is called as band 3 because there is third band that is seen on the electrophoresis okay will be just this protein comes as a third band when you electrophoresis it right then of course there will be chloride and seo3 negative shift that occurs in this band and chloride shift causes water to enter the rbc and that's why rbc swells up and that's the reason mcv mean corpuscular volume will be more in your venous blood because venous blood is generally seen towards the tissue side right so veins will be having deoxygenated blood for sure and since deoxygenation is there that will be having more and more chloride coming inside the cells and swelling up the rbc and that's why you will be seeing more hamburger phenomena or the chloride shift in the venous blood for sure so if you go back to the question and try to answer this particular question so let's see the statement one the figure shows chloride shift yes there is a shifting of the chloride which we are seeing here and it occurs at the tissue site the figure shows hamburger phenomena yes hamburger phenomena is the second name of the chloride shift we have already discussed this now because of this chloride shift the chloride ion will be or content of the red cells in venous blood is significantly greater than the arterial blood because the venous blood carries the deoxygenated blood and there will be a lack of oxygen more and more carbon dioxide will be there and that's why there will be more availability of co2 that will be entering the cell reacting with the water forming h plus and bicarbonate ion this bicarbonate ion will be coming out of the cells in lieu of in exchange with chloride ion that's exchanges from the band 3 and that's why you will be having more and more chloride ion or chloride shift in the venous blood for sure so the they have asked about the incorrect statement none of these statement is incorrect all are correct so answer is going to be 4 for this particular question